All right, we're going to take a look at the arpeggio stuff that you sent in. And then we'll talk about sixth chords. So, uh, did, uh, did well for the most part. Got lots of good stuff in. Uh, one thing to point out is when you, when you want to enter a chord name, you want to hit the letter A. And that brings this up. If you don't want to have a bunch of chord diagrams showing up at the top of the page, you need to make sure that display diagram is turned off. So hit the letter A so you can input the chord name instead of erasing any text stuff. Okay. So <clears throat> first thing to point out uh, here, this is an A minor 7, absolutely. Uh, one thing we're doing here or one reason why I've been wanting you to end these progressions with the seventh chord arpeggios and actually I, did I fill that in? I don't remember. But what I want to do is basically we're reuse these. These arpeggio shapes because if we used them before, so we're using them again to recap or review using those things so technically yeah I mean that's an A minor 7 2 but the way we learned it the way we went over it first was like this and yeah you got the octave thing it's a little bit different but that's a special thing we talked about um, so this is what I'd like you to do is on all of the uh, seventh chord stuff See if you can remember how to play it the way we originally went over it. Because uh, part of this is just being able to reference things that you've used before and just plug it in. Uh, but anyway, continuing on here. Um, so this G7 sus2. Uh, let's see. <coughs> Actually, a couple things here. Look at how all of these sus twos are. You got your root, the second interval, <coughs> five, and then the seven or flat seven will be up here. So this is written out a bit different. So we're, we're, we're using the shapes that you learned to reinforce what you learned. So doing this, I mean, yeah, those are the notes. Actually, wait a minute, I played the wrong thing. So those, those are the notes, but the shape's a little bit different, so I'd like you to change this to the shapes that you have done in the past, uh, just to make sure that you, you get good use out of them. And also, the placement of this needs to be moved because this is way, this is too much of a jump going from the 15 back down to the 10. So, this guy needs to be changed uh, as well as this. So, see the, the dot here? If you hit the asterisk, that'll get rid of it. So once you've filled in the new, uh, the, the new shape along with putting it into position, you go ahead and get rid of that dot there. So this way you can also get more familiar with how the program works. D minor 7, yes this is a D minor 7, but I'd like you to reuse the arpeggio shape that we've done in the past to reinforce what you have used before. Okay, so everything's good here, although again, see about uh, using the other <coughs> minor 7 shape that we have used before. Again, just to reinforce what you have learned. Uh, this, I'd like you to just fix the notation here. Uh, again, to get more familiar with the program. The notes are correct. So what you can do is either open up the panel up here. Uh, is that showing? No, I need to zoom out a little bit. Okay. So you can open up the panel here and then change the note value up here, okay? 
The other thing you can do is you can hit the plus or minus sign in order to change the value of it. So if you hit plus, it will, well, it's, if you hit plus, you decrease the length of the notes. If you hit minus, you increase the length of the note. It, you'd think it'd be the other way. But uh, yeah, so again, the notes here are good. The notes are, <coughs> the notes are correct, but I would like you to fix the rhythmic notation and get more familiar with the program. Whoops, clicked the wrong thing. Okay. Let's move this back. <clears throat> okay. Uh, there is a note that's incorrect here. I'd like you to fix that. Um, and then this note here, I changed the rhythmic value for it to be incorrect or else I would have forgot about it. This note is incorrect. It needs to be changed there. And also see if you can put in the way we have gone over the minor sevens before. This is again technically correct but I just want to reuse what we've done in the past to reinforce what you've done in the past. Uh, the, this is an E7 sus flat 2 but the placement of it could be better so this way you're not having to skip strings to go back up to the F note. And same thing here, placement. You can put it somewhere else so you are not having to skip strings to get back to the F and make the transitions more efficient. Um, and this one, what's going on here? Right, so this is just another are the notes correct? Yes, but it's not using the shapes that you've learned. So, just want to make sure that you get adequate use out of what we have done before. So, if you could change this pattern to look like the other seven sus fours starting on the D string, that would be good. So, let me know if you have any questions about that, and I will. Just saved it there and I'll send that to you in the email. Uh, so sixth chords, let's see. That's what we're gonna go over next, sixth chords. So the summary is you're basically doing the same thing to make a seventh chord. You take your triad and then you add a six or a flat six. So we are going to be using major six. Hang on, let me bring this up. Major six, minor six, minor flat six, and minor flat six, flat five. I suppose you could also come across a chord labeled like diminished, and then in parentheses say flat six. But we're going to be kind of we're basically taking like a minor 7 flat 5, but instead of saying minor 7 flat 5, we'll say minor flat 6 flat 5. So kind of, we're basically just using the same logic of naming this last chord here <clears throat> the way we did the 7th chords. So instead of a minor 7 flat 5 in the 7th position, now we're going to have a minor flat 6 flat 5 for the new types of chords. So it talks up here about like an easy way to get to these chords or create the new chord is find a fifth interval being used and raise it up. So a lot of times you'll have two fifth intervals being used in a chord shape and so you just raise one of them up. Uh, however, another way or another approach is to take an octave of the root note and lower that down to the six or flat six, just like you did with the seven or flat seven. So what we have, what we're going to do, what you're going to do, there it is. <clears throat> so you got our three usual keys, key of C, key of G, key of F, and we got a place for the basic triad chord, so you can just play as many open chords as you can, 
or the bar chords. So basically, the the first chord you come to, that's probably the right one you want to do. But <clears throat> you know, like a C chord, D minor chord, E minor chord, you can do all those open. So do that first. So write that chord in first. Make sure you hit A. So this way you don't you, you don't want to erase all this mode information and whatnot. Okay, it's very very helpful. It's gonna allow you to see what you're working with so make sure you do not hit the letter T to start adding text because if you do that you will erase the mode info so hit the letter A instead uh, then you can enter your chord name there a lot of times it will auto fill and some of the chords such as a minor flat six will not be filled in that way it'll give it a different name but uh, Guitar Pro doesn't always put in everything that we want. So anyway, you have basic triad chord first, you know, major, minor, or diminished, and then you do the sixth chord version instead. So one thing, it, another thing it talks about here, that's not what we want. Uh, yeah, on this sheet, on this PDF, it talks about how the uh, fifth interval can sometimes be kicked out. So. The, the fifth interval is the most expendable interval. The reason why is because it does not give a major, major, I hope I said it that way, a major or minor sound. It doesn't have a major or minor sound. So like if you play the first and third at the same time, like, you know, like C D at the same time, it has a major sound to it. If you play like A and C at the same time, minor sound to it. Those are referred to as dyads or like two note chords. So it uh, the fifth interval really just emphasizes the root note. So on some of these sixth chords if you don't have the fifth interval it's not a big deal so long as you have the uh, the other intervals involved. So if you just have like the one, three, and six technically that's fine. That's enough for it to sound like a sixth chord. The only exception, or exception, um, I don't know if that's the right word here, like, let's say the seventh chord in position. So, you know, once you get to, like in the key of C, once you get to changing the B diminished, well, you need to keep that flat five in the chord because the chord is going to be a minor flat six, flat five. So without the flat five in the chord, well, you can't say it's a flat five. So there, the fifth interval technically the flat five now it's not expendable you have to have a flat five present if you want that diminished sound okay so there we go that's stuff to work on and so we're just changing that stuff uh, in the arpeggios that you turned in and we'll start working on creating some sixth chords and any questions come up let me know hope you're having a good time i'll see you next week